Aesop Fables, Volume 8 The Ants and the Grasshopper One bright day in late autumn, a family of ants was bustling about in the warm sunshine, drying out the grain they had stored up during the summer, when a starving grasshopper, his fiddle under his arm, came up and humbly begged for a bite to eat. What? cried the ants in surprise. Haven't you stored anything away for the winter? What in the world were you doing all last summer? I didn't have time to store up any food, whined the grasshopper. I was so busy making music that before I knew it, the summer was gone. The ants shrugged their shoulders in disgust. Making music, were you? they cried. Very well, no dance. And they turned their backs on the grasshopper and went on with their work. Moral. There is a time for work and a time for play. The Frogs Who Wished for a King The frogs were tired of governing themselves. They had so much freedom that it had spoiled them, and they did nothing but sit around croaking in a bored manner and wishing for a government that could entertain them with the pomp and display of royalty and rule them in a way to make them know they were being ruled. No milk-and-water government for them, they declared. So they sent a petition to Jupiter, asking for a king. Jupiter saw what simple and foolish creatures they were, but to keep them quiet and make them think they had a king, he threw down a huge log, which fell into the water with a great splash. The frogs hid themselves among the weeds and grasses, thinking the new king to be some fearful giant. But they soon discovered how tame and peaceable King Log was. In a short time, the younger frogs were using him for a diving platform, while the older frogs made him a meeting place where they complained loudly to Jupiter about the government. To teach the frogs a lesson, the ruler of the gods now sent a crane to be king of Frogland. The crane proved to be a very different sort of king from Old King Log. He gobbled up the poor frogs right and left, and they soon saw what fools they had been. In mournful croaks, they begged Jupiter to take away the cruel tyrant before they should all be destroyed. How now, cried Jupiter, are you not yet content? You have what you asked for, and so you have only yourselves to blame for your misfortunes. Moral. Be sure you can better your condition before you seek to change. The Oak and the Reeds A giant oak stood near a brook in which grew some slender reeds. When the wind blew, the great oak stood proudly upright with its hundred arms uplifted to the sky. But the reeds bowed low in the wind and sang a sad and mournful song. You have reason to complain, said the oak. The slightest breeze that ruffles the surface of the water makes you bow your heads, while I, the mighty oak, stand upright and firm before the howling tempest. Do not worry about us, replied the reeds. The winds do not harm us. We bow before them, and so we do not break. You and all your pride and strength have so far resisted their blows, but the end is coming. (coughs) 
As the reeds spoke, a great hurricane rushed out to the north. The oak stood proudly and fought against the storm, while the yielding reeds bowed low. The wind redoubled in fury, and all at once the great tree fell, torn up by the roots, and lay among the pitying reeds. Moral, better to yield when it is folly to resist, than to resist stubbornly and be destroyed. The Boys and the Frogs Some boys were playing one day on the edge of a pond, in which lived a family of frogs. The boys amused themselves by throwing stones into the pond, so as to make them skip on the top of the water. The stones were flying thick and fast, and the boys were enjoying themselves very much. But the poor frogs in the pond were trembling with fear. At last, one of the frogs, the oldest and the bravest, put his head out of the water and said, Oh, please, dear children, stop your cruel play. Though it may be fun for you, it means death to us. Moral Always stop to think whether your fun may not be the cause of another's unhappiness. The Lion, the Fox, and the Bear Just as a great bear rushed to seize a stray kid, a lion leaped from the other direction upon the same prey. The two fought furiously for the prize, until they had received so many wounds that both sank down unable to continue the battle. Just then a fox dashed up, and seizing the kid, made off with it as fast as he could go, while the lion and the bear looked on in helpless rage. How much better it would have been, they said, to have shared in a friendly spirit. Moral. Those who have all the toil do not always get the profit. The Wolf and the Lamb A stray lamb stood drinking early one morning on the bank of a woodland stream. That very same morning, a hungry wolf came by further up the stream, hunting for something to eat. He soon got his eyes on the lamb. As a rule, Mr. Wolf snapped up such delicious morsels without making any bones about it. But this lamb looked so very helpless and innocent that the wolf felt he ought to have some kind of an excuse for taking its life. How dare you paddle around in my stream and stir up all the mud, he shouted fiercely. You deserve to be punished severely for your rashness. But, 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 but your highness, replied the trembling lamb, D do not be, be angry. I, I cannot possibly muddy the water you are drinking up there. Remember, you are upstream and I am downstream. You do muddy it, retorted the wolf savagely. And besides, I have heard that you told lies about me last year. How, how, how could I have done so? pleaded the lamb. I, I wasn't born until this year. If it wasn't you, it was your brother. I, I, I have no brothers. Well then, snarled the wolf, it was someone in your family anyway, but no matter who it was, I do not intend to be talked out of my breakfast. Then, without more words, the wolf seized the poor lamb and carried her off to the forest. Moral. The tyrant can always find an excuse for his tyranny. <laughs>